Hello everybody and welcome back to Soma. In the last video we escaped into this decrepit, flooded area. We are still inside of Theta, but that is about to change because we are on our way out of this place. We've successfully escaped from the proxies, and so aside from having to do some dangerous parkour and platforming type stuff, uh, we're safe from any type of monster. So what you're gonna want to do is just kind of follow the path over across to the other side. It's fairly linear, there's a bunch of ladders and stuff laid out. Now when you get to this point, be very, very careful uh, getting on this ladder. Please don't do what I did, like the first time I played this, I jumped. I overshot it and I landed in the water and I had to go back and do the whole thing all over again. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, when you climb down this ladder though, you can jump because we need to land on that piece right below me. And there might be an easier way to get down there that doesn't result in you taking damage, but uh, I, I just jump. So, anyways. Remove that panel. Uh, excuse me. There we go. Come over here to your left. There's a healing spot if you need it. I guess I'll use it. Since I did take some fall damage. I don't really need it, but... We'll use it anyways. And then we're going to... Flip the switch for the emergency flush. And this is going to basically flush us out of Theta back into the ocean. So we're going to be doing some more ocean parts. Oh, lovely. And we get flushed out right next to a body. So you should get yourself an achievement when you land out here. And uh, we're actually going to be running into quite a few corpses in this area. And I'm going to activate all the black boxes in the order that I believe the crew died. So obviously the first corpse here would have been the first one to die after coming out of... Theta, so let's activate this corpse here. What happened? What did she do? Come on, we gotta get her out of there. Holy shit, hard blew up the O2 surplus. She sealed the tunnel. She really didn't want anchors following us to Omicron. Ah oh, shit, she's fucking hurt. Her suit is leaking. We have to get her to Omicron. Shit, it's bad, real bad. Oh fuck, no! So yeah, this lady here, I guess, blew up her oxygen tank so that the proxies wouldn't follow these guys through to where they were going to go, which is uh, pretty heroic, I must say. I mean, when you look at the fact that there's acres and three other proxies roaming around in there, I don't think they'd give a shit about being on the ocean floor. They could probably chase you forever and ever, really, if they uh, needed to. I also noticed that the recording was a little bit different, and I think uh, what I had done was I went into the options and I changed a setting. I turned on the closed captioning option. I had turned it on to see if I could distinguish what those corpses were saying back in Theta, and I left it on. It didn't work, by the way, but I had kept this on because I figured, oh, it's got to do something along the way, and I guess that's what it does. I guess turning on closed captioning will tell you who is saying what line when you data mine black boxes and data buffers and stuff like that. If I would have known that earlier, I probably would have turned that on a long time ago, to be honest, because that's kind of helpful. I don't know, that's kind of a cool 
uh, feature to have. All right. Let's find Omicron. Not really helpful if it's just Simon and Catherine having a conversation, because that's fairly obvious, but it's kind of uh, nice to see who was in what scenario. You know, for example, we now know that Strasky made it out of Theta, because he, he's been mentioned a fair bit, actually, throughout the course of the game. There's a uh, robot out here, but it's not active, it's just kind of laying about. I thought that was a robot in the distance. It kind of looks like it from afar, but I think it's just a little fish. You guys can see it there floating above me. Uh, and that's Omicron. Look at all those biohazardous symbols. Wow, this place looks real inviting. This is Omicron? Hope they saved me at dining. Station. They basically slapped, like, danger do not enter all over this place. There's another corpse here. If we try to open this, we can't because there's a power failure. But let's go ahead and investigate this diving suit here. Hey, come on! Open up! What is this shit? Are we for the apocalypse? Omicron is in quarantine. This is why they didn't answer our call. Hello! Christ, Strasky, it's called a radio. They're not gonna hear you better if you scream. Jonesy, you okay? Look, I know you're the strong silent type, but I need you to say something every now and then so I know you're all right. Jonesy? Jones. Oh, yeah. Fuck's sakes. Let's try the annex again. Maybe we can break in. We're losing Jonesy. We need to get her inside. Well, get in line! Alvaro, there's nothing we can do for her right now. Hit the stasis switch and let's check the annex. So it doesn't really say what happened to her, but I think what the issue was, uh, if I'm to understand it, is that she was injured uh, by escaping. So I think Akers probably injured her, or one of the proxies injured her, and she succumbed to her injuries and she uh, died right outside of Omicron. So now we gotta work on getting the gate open. Also, by the way, what the hell are these? These look like water mines or something. If anyone can tell me what these are, then please, uh, please let me know because I have no idea what they are. I mean, it's kind of cool because, uh, they give you a little bit of light in this area, but, uh, it says power failure and so I don't know what these are or what they do, but maybe I'll see if I can look at these screens once I turn the power back on. And there's also a healing... Uh, spot attached to this particular beacon. All right. Well, I got I got off track. Time to turn the power back on. If you just follow the path outside of Omicron to this tower over here. This is where we can turn on the power. This is one of the substations. Uh, and if you turn, if you're heading towards the ladder in this direction, if you turn around, there's a corpse there. I missed that my first time. I absolutely did not see this corpse here because I just walked straight past it. So we'll activate this one. It won't fucking open. And nobody's answering to anything. What kind of cold-hearted motherfuckers would just leave us out here to die? Don't you get it? They're dead. They're all dead. Yeah. You're right. How can you be so calm about this shit? We are dying! How much air have you guys got? 20 minutes. Tops. Hey, I'm in red. Seconds away before the CO2 gets me. Strasky. Why wait, right? I'm the master of my own fate. Wait, Stress, what are you doing? <laughs> Oh. 
That is fucked up. I would say that's one of my biggest fears. I would absolutely not want to drown to death. I think that is probably one of the worst ways to go, but apparently Strasky thought that that was better than running out of oxygen, just sitting around and, you know, running out of oxygen or letting the uh, carbon build up in his blood. Again, really too bad. Uh, and I really liked some of these characters from what we've heard about them. I mean, Catherine seemed to really like Strasky. She called him to help her when uh, she was having problems with the last guy who killed himself after the ARC scan. I think it was Sarah who described Strasky as really liking everybody. We heard him talking to Amy and Carl over at Epsilon. And uh, again, it's another character we've really heard a lot about. And it's just really sad to see him kind of come unraveled and, you know, in a very panicked state and, and seeing him end up that way. It's really a shame. But the good news is he had his scan done, so all the more reason to get the arc up and running. So in order to get up here, we can take this panel off here for the manual override, and we can read the instructions. Before flushing, make sure to open up the valves and turn on the pump. Alright, so you want to push this button first. You want to go ahead and turn the valves first. This is the pump switch, so pull that. And once you've done those two things, you can go ahead and flush the area. You can try and use the Omni tool on this area, but it won't work. But the hatch is opened. So we're inside again temporarily. We can have a look around this place. It's safe in here. I don't remember there being a spooky, scary jump scare. I think there's a note up here on the top area. From John Strohmeyer, Adam Galeski is ordered to come to Theta as soon as possible. It's urgent. There's no date on this one, so we don't know when this was sent. And then on the back, there's also some writing here. Gask, I tried to figure out what it was about, but they wouldn't tell me anything. All I know is they've asked if you were missing or if you were dead. Something must have freaked them out. I think you'd better do as they tell you, Herbie. Doesn't really uh, help us because there's not really anybody alive or any follow-up notes to let us know what happened to that guy, if anything. And I think that's really all there is in this area. Um, we can try and look at this corpse and data mine him. But all you're gonna get is static. I'm not getting anything. I can't read him like the others. That'll be explained uh, in, in due time. There's also a healing spot here. Before I plug Catherine, I'm just going to see if there's anything else to look at. But I don't think so. This is just basically uh, an area that we have to go to to turn the power back on. So let's go ahead and plug her in. Catherine? What? Huh. There you are. Where are we? We're right next to Omicron, a smaller building connected to the main site. Can't you tell? No, my view is pretty limited. There's some heavy restrictions on my system access. Did you find a power suit? Not yet. Trying to figure out how to get into Omicron, the big building. Oh, okay. Keep up the good work. That's it? You got nothing? Good luck. Thanks. I mean, what else can she really say, right? Kath, how are you so okay with all this? With what? Being a talking box, for one thing. Not being human. It's not so bad. So, 
You're not bothered at all by not having a body? I'm getting there. You're making me feel really self-conscious. Come on, be serious. I never felt that comfortable being human in the first place. This isn't much worse. Not being able to move would freak me out. Glad you got the box and not me. Would make it a little easier to help out if I had a body, but you're doing a good job. Aww. Just figured being able to stretch a little would give you some ease. My physical constraints don't translate to my experience very well. I feel about as human as before, but as if suspended in air. Which is kind of interesting now that I think about it. So that's an interesting sort of uh, perspective from Catherine. You know, she didn't really feel comfortable as a human yeah. anyway, so... Why do you think I was made? Why would this AI, the WoW, bring me here? I don't think we could ever know. I have my own beliefs, but nothing that can be verified. Tell me, why do you think the WoW brought me here? The WoW had a range of assignments, but they all sprung from one single idea. Preserve humanity. When the comet hit the Earth, killing everything, leaving a fraction of humanity left alive, the WoW started to compensate. It's restoring humanity. I think so, but I don't think we share its definition of human. Or life, for that matter. Ah, that explains a lot. That explains why the people are being hooked up to the WoW and being kind of artificially kept alive. Catherine, are we alive? That's an impossible question to answer. We lack meaningful definitions. Just figure there must be a way to know. To know if this life is worth living. You assume you've changed so much, but have you really... I don't know. I don't feel so different. But the world sure does. I never realized how much the idea of myself depended on where I am. How do you mean? I miss Toronto. And not because my friends and family are there, but... because I know where I fit in. In Toronto, I know who I am. That's an interesting observation. I'd like to make progress, but every time I try, these two keep talking. Which is a good thing, because it fills in a lot of uh, story and just some thoughts that Catherine and Simon are having. But I think they're done talking for now. If you try to examine this guy's black box while Catherine is plugged in, she'll also have something to say about that as well. Idea who this is? Not really. Not that familiar with the people at Omicron. Or maybe she won't. Come on, Catherine. I know you usually have something to say about me not being able to read this guy. Essentially, uh, if the dialogue doesn't pop up here, she just explains about how it is that we're able to access the memories of these people. If you haven't already figured it out, she, she basically just confirms that it's the whole black box thing, the little mini computers that everyone has implanted in their brains, and she just explains that it's basically pathos to policy and that every single uh, employee has one, and the reason that we probably can't read this guy is because his black box is malfunctioning or it's probably been overloaded or, you know, something like that. So in order to make progress in this area, we're going to want to come over to this panel here. We can rip it off the wall, and we're going to have to make power go all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. And there's only um, a certain amount of moves that you can make. So usually what I like to do is I like to turn on all of the bottom switches and go from there. I like to kind of work from the bottom up. There you go. Very simple. Alright, so this video is getting uh, pretty long. I don't really think there's a whole lot else to do here before we're going to go back in the water and uh, actually make our way inside of Omicron, but I try not to make these videos too long when I can help it, so we'll stop it here. And now that the terminals are lit up and the power is back on, we will try a couple of uh, different things in this room and we'll advance on in the next video. So thank you all so very much for watching and I hope that I will see you next.